everybody in this room has at some point fallen over and hurt themselves. So you can imagine the pain I'm feeling right now. But why is it painful? And how come if these injuries happen in a dirty world, we can often get up and carry on without the need for man-made medicine? Our bodies have a fire within us, an instantaneous response to injury called inflammation, without which a simple scratch could prove fatal. How do we know that this fire has started? If we take the example of inflamed skin, it will look red, feel hot, swell up, and it will hurt. I'm fascinated by what causes these features of inflammation. Firstly, redness and heat are caused by increased blood flow to the injury site. It feels hot because our skin is cooler than the 37 degrees C on the inside of our body, where the blood's being pumped from. This is important because our blood contains white blood cells that can fight infections and mend wounds. We need these cells at the site of injury. But there's no point in these cells being rushed there, only for them to be swiftly circulated away again. No problem, because at the site of inflammation, our blood vessels become leaky, allowing the white blood cells to escape, and this results in swelling. Finally, our external surfaces contain nerve endings, which can be stimulated not only by heat and swelling, but also by chemicals produced during inflammation. Our brain recognizes this stimulation and we feel pain, which alerts us to the damage. Now these are the early stages of inflammation, but this is only one half of my story. Now, living in Newcastle, I've observed that Geordies love to party. And <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that inflammation is actually like a house party. Now, ideally, you want the party to end and the house to be spotless, but that probably means that no one turned up, or that there was no inflammation, and that's no good. A more successful party should end with a messy house and with some things broken. You attempt to clean and tidy the damage, but that antique vase will never be the same again. <laughs> The inflammatory equivalent of this is a scar. But at least the party ended. What if your guests never leave? Mess and damage will accumulate, and any attempts to clean and tidy will be a waste of time and energy. Similarly, inflammation, which doesn't end, is damaging, and is a feature of diseases including heart disease, cancer, and arthritis. While medicines that help inflammation do exist, we still need researchers like me to find ways to better balance the good and bad consequences of inflammation. So hopefully, in the future, the only scars we'll have from falling over in public will be emotional, and the only pain we'll feel is that of embarrassment. <laughs> Again, marvellous use of the full three minutes, but judges, did she stoop to conquer? Why is it that uh, you get uh, soldiers sometimes in the heat of battle who have extraordinary injuries and they report no pain? It happens to them later, but the, at the time, they report no pain. Yeah. Um, well, it's not just in that case as well. But, um, I mean, I don't think I felt any pain there either. And I think it's um, because pain is complex, and so I was having a rush of adrenaline at the time, and so adrenaline is um, a neurotransmitter and can affect the way that you know, this pain happens. Now, I'm not a neuroscientist, so this isn't my favorite area. But um, you know, pain, pain is very complex. We've got these signals coming up here. They're coming up our nerves. But, but how our brain perceives them can depend on, on other signals, so other neurotransmitters. But you know, the, yeah, what we're experiencing at the time. What, why might we look to crocodiles and birds to help us with our injuries. I'm not mad, all right? <laughs> no, it's interesting, because we look at crocodiles, they can have a leg chewed off in a swamp, and they can live there. If we get a scratch in the same swamp, we're dead. But this, heel can, this wound can be fettered and nasty and stinky for a long time. Whereas birds, they can break a wing and it can heal astoundingly rapidly. Is there anything to do with physiology where we might be able to borrow immune systems from other animals to help our own? Uh, I, well, I think it could be quite a good place to look. Um, 
<laughs> or, see, I think that the idea of a, a crocodile is quite interesting because the crocodile has, um, you know, quite a hard exterior shell. And the way that, you know, that, that protects it, so in some ways they may have a different, they are going to have an inherently different way to mend their wounds than we are going to have because they already have some more external protection than we do. So it's going to be different. Now, whether we can actually harness that and use it to our advantage, I don't know, and actually it sounds very interesting. We could maybe future... We're research. strange in Manchester. We do things with crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been it. misreading I thought it was crocodile tears. It's crocodile tears, isn't it? Um, I've been misreading it. <laughs> but no, 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 this, this process is... It is it's, it's so complex, and, and it is a struggle. We, we need to find better ways to, to kind of treat inflammation that... What I was trying to get across is that we need to balance the ability to mend these wounds really well to fight off the infections, but we can't allow um, the bad sides of this. So lots of the drugs that we use have side effects so if you use them long term. So we need to, have to try and find ways to unpick all the different aspects of information in us. And yes, in probably every other animal, that might be useful as well. But um, we're not there yet. One final question for yes. our final finalist. Um, inflammation seems to be an ongoing topic through quite a bit of fame efforts. Why did you pick this topic? Because you were saying you're not a neuroscientist. Why did this fascinate you so much? Well, I, um, fasc I work on inflammation. So actually, I um, yeah, was hoping I wasn't going to get as much stuff as neuroscience. <laughs> yeah, obviously I did. Tough. Um, yeah, no, exactly. Um, I am fascinated by inflammation. It's what I work on. It's what I want to keep working on. And it's one of these topics where I'm... I'm Presumably, most of the audience will have heard of inflammation, but you see it on the TV adverts, you know, oh, have you got an inflamed joint? But do they actually know? Do you, does everyone actually know what inflammation is, why it happens, what's going on in our body? In my experience, people don't know that, and I really want to let people know that. And I love hopefully it. they now do, after three minutes of inflammation information from Rachel Williams. Thank you.